Hi, I'm Liam, welcome to the channel. It's been a while since I uploaded um, and a few things going on. The missus has finally moved up here with me, so it's been a busy week or two. But right now, let's get back to our Evolution Mitosaur and we'll get doing uh, a cup test. Uh, I'm doing a little test today. I'm not gonna run the intro. I'm just checking on some stats and figures of YouTube. So we're just gonna get into this. Let me come around there. Right, so if you've seen me other previous videos, we went through setting up this, we've been through the features of it, and in the last video I told you that I had blunted the blade. Because we tried to cut this, which I thought was mild steel, and in one of our previous videos we did a test on how to recognise or how to find out what steel you've got, whether it's a hardened steel, whether it's a mild steel. Um, so what we've got now is Evolution, the people at Evolution, because I'm reviewing this, testing it out for them, not sponsored or being paid by them, they've just sent me this to review. Um, so they've sent me a box of goodies. Um, I have bought some new blades. Because this is one of their new products, there was a few teething troubles. Um, like I think this is exclusive to Screwfix, so they should sell the blades. But at the time, I've got this, and I'm not sure whether the Screwfix are selling these uh, still yet. But I ended up, at, uh, I spoke to the people at Evolution, um, I ended up paying for a new blade, and even Evolution sent me the wrong one. What they sent me, um, the codes on here, this one has a CS, which is for the circular saw, and the circular saw rotates in a different way, uh, rotates that way actually. You can tell by which way the teeth going. Circular saw rotates that way. Um, so I contacted them, um, I've actually helped them sort out some of their teething problems now about how this should be highlighted, which blades um, are being sold and you know how, hopefully how they're marked up so you don't make the mistake of buying the wrong blade. I mean, I didn't make a mistake, I ordered the right one, but they sent me the wrong one. Um, so the one you want has got MS on it for Mitosaur. And as you can see, the teeth are going in the opposite direction. So it rotates around that way. If you do get one of these and you need to get a new blade, look out for CS is for Circular Saw, MS is for the Mitosaurs. Also, this one comes out of the box with a 16 tooth blade. And now I've upgraded to the, um, the 20 tooth blade. So should give you a little um, little bit of a better cut, uh, a finer cut, not, not as rough. So I think I, ended up, I think I paid about 20, 25 pounds for that blade. Um, so also they've sent me a box of goodies to cut now. Now they've sent me a mild steel. I used this to test in one of my last videos. So sling that one, because that one is hardened. Um, so we've also got some composite decking. So that's not wood, that's made of like a composite material. That's actually really heavy. It's like a new me uh, decking material, so it doesn't rot and stuff like that. So it's a bit of two by four. Got some nails in the end so we can uh, cut through the end of those. Bit of copper pipe, bit of PVC pipe, 22 mil, no, um, 32 mil even. Quarter inch, one and a quarter inch. Get it right. Uh, Sent of a little bit of a little bit of trim, and then we got some. Then we got some aluminium and some other metal. That's probably another mild steel because that one's pretty heavy too. Right, so that's all the goodies in the box. So we'll put these to one side. All right, so we're unplugged. All right, let's show you how to change the blade. All right, so we can take our Allen key that we've got stored in the back of the machine that comes with it. Uh, you've got a, like I explained in the other video, you've got your smaller end and your fatter end. Your fatter end is for your disc. All right, now you've got to remember this is a, a reverse thread, so it's not lefty loosey, righty tighty. It's the opposite way around, reverse that. Right, now we've just got a button on the top of here. Let's spin it around so we can show you. Right, so we've just got a little button on the top of it that we can press down and it will stop our blade 
from rotating. Turn, trying to turn this the other side, doesn't move. So that's like your little button to stop your blade from spinning. So what we do is turn it back again. Uh, I'm just going to lock this arm in place so that doesn't keep moving backwards and forwards as well. Right, so all we do, we push that button down so our, our disc is now locked, can't move it, and we're going to go clockwise to loosen this. So there we go, that's broken that seal, and now we can just take our screw all the way out. And now we can just lift our guard. Oh, we've got to press the lever down. Press the lever down. We can lift our guard up out the way. We can hold on to the blade, take our collar off, and just slide the blade out. And remember, this is loose. The, your, your, oh, I think it's called an arbor. I could do it a clean in there. Just remember that stays on there and what way round it goes. Right, so now we make sure we take our correct blade. Our mitosaur MS. Oh yeah, and also it's a 185mm blade. 20 teeth this one, so it's an upgrade from it's an upgrade from the standard one they give you, which is only a 16 tooth blade. Right again, we just hold our lever down. Let's pop that down for a second. I'll be careful when you're putting this down because these carbide teeth are very, um, they can be very delicate. You don't want to be knocking them. They do hang out the side slightly. So you don't want to be like smashing them down on the surfaces. You know, just put them down gently. Be careful of the teeth. So we're just going to release our guard again, lift it up. We're going to carefully slide this in place. So we're not hitting the teeth and damaging our teeth. Slide that back over there. Put our bolt back in anti-clockwise to tighten. Right, so we've got that finger tight. Then we can just make sure that blade is rotating okay and it's not rubbing on anything. Now we press our button down again and just make sure that's nipped up nice and tight there. Right, new blade in. Simple as that. Allen key back in this little holder in the back. Right, now I'm not going to bore you with going through everything I'm cutting up. I'm just going to cut them. I'll put on the bottom of the screen what it is. But what we do, um, I've got an old bit of pine floor in here. So we'll do a test cut on this. This is this is one of my own pieces of wood I've got laying around. Um, but this is a softwood. So we're going to test the cut on this. See how nice and smooth it is. And then we'll go for all our products like We'll start off with the woods, we'll go through the metals and then we'll come back to this piece of floorboard at the end and we'll see if the cut is still good. So we'll leave, um, so yeah, let's cut this one first. Right, let's make a test cut, make sure we're all set up, make sure our blade's going down properly. We haven't got our depth, depth gauge set over here, so we've got our full cut. Give it a quick spin, that's spinning nicely. So... Let's cut this and see how good it does. He says, test your cut first. Got to undo the arm. The arms are sliding. There we go. We'll undo the arm. We're sliding. Uh, also, this doesn't come with a bag. This is just one I had laying around. So it would be nice if it comes with a bag because this blows sawdust everywhere. But anyway. That is a really nice smooth cut actually. I don't know how well you can see that. I don't know how well you can see all that, but there's no breakout. Obviously you got a bit of breakout at the back because we've got no, got no um, zero fences, but even underneath, even the bottom part of it, there's a nice, that is a nice clean cut. It's just that little breakout at the back. So we're now just cut for everything else and then we'll come back to this and see if it's nice as nice and clean as that at the end. Easy one first, plastic pipe. Right, 
Beautiful, no burring on, there's no burring on that at all. PVC pipe, done. Right, let's try a bit of this composite decking. Messy, but yeah, that is a nice, that is a beautiful clean cut on there. Obviously, as you can see, just having a bag on here doesn't really do much. When I've got my garage built, I'm going to invest in a shop vacuum, I think. Two by four with nails in. Right, and that's it, we've got a clean cut straight through our nails. So uh, you got wood with nails in. You don't have to worry about that at all. We've got a bit of orange there from the blade coming off. Right, let's try our aluminium. Or as you Yanks call it, aluminium. Let's cut through that okay. A bit of wobbling around. I always worry when I cut metals, especially with a spinning blade like this. But aluminum, fine. Right, now I am taking these slow, slower when I go through the metals. I don't want anything kicking out of me. And if you are cutting metals and you've got like a little piece like this floating around the end, make sure you let the blade stop before you lift it up. Like I say, those carbide teeth, they stick out to the slides, side slightly. So if you lift it up where well, you've got a little piece sitting here, that blade could just fire that thing to the other side of the room. And that's actually, that's, um, that's quite cool to the touch. That's not even really warm. But there, that's a... If we can see on there. It's quite a nice cut. Nice and clean, no burring. Right, now this piece of steel, metal, whatever it is. Okay, gone through that piece okay. I do get worried about cutting through metals. Yeah, we've got a little bit that's left on the end there, but that will snap off. And as you can see, I'm touching it, so that's not even that's not even hot, which is good. And now the angle iron. 
the tough bit of steel. This is the one I worry about the most because I've already blunted the blade, cutting that hardened steel. So we're going to take this slowly, see how we got on. I might actually put the, uh, might just put the clamp on for this one. Just going to lift it up. We've got a couple of V's in these clamps. We can put that down, hold that in place, tighten that down. So that's nice and tight on there. Right, now we're going to do this one slowly because I'm scared. <laughs> And we're through. That one is a little bit. That is warmer than the last ones, but it's still, still cool to the touch. Really, it's warm. But there we go. Mild steel. We're through it. Hurrah! I'm glad about that. So yeah, although you know you don't want to be just smashing it down, cutting through that because. You've got a chance of that metal just bouncing around and um, you do get bits flying off that are quite sharp. So probably gloves, definitely glasses. Wear safety glasses while you're doing this. Right, it's now, I should really brush this out. Let's get some of this muck off. Right, let's just clear out some of our crap that's on there. Right, so a bit of trim, a dado, window trim, door trim, whatever you want to call it. Still cutting that nice little bit of tear out on the bottom of that one. But only a little bit, that's okay. Right, and let's do a cut on our soft pine floorboard again. And we'll see how clean this cut is. Oh, and there we go, that is that is very good. There's no tear out on the top. Again, none on the bottom of that one, although we had a bit on our uh, our trim. So yeah, and obviously we just got our little bit of, little bit of, uh, oh, why do I keep forgetting it's called tear out? A little bit of tear out on the back. Right, and I'm gonna show you with this as well, what we can do with our depth stop. So, let me just spin this round so you can see it again. So on the side here, we have our depth stop for our blade. So we can pull this down and then you have an adjustable screw on here that you can turn to decide what depth you want the blade. So when you pull it down, move it out of the way, that is sort of just going into the top of that wood. So we can adjust this screw. So it's probably going down about halfway. Let me spin it back around the other way, see if I can see it on camera. Right, so as you can see, we can tilt that down there. We can move our screw one way so we can push it down further. Or you can turn it the opposite way. So you're just taking a, a tiny piece out of the top of the wood. So let's go down probably like a third or halfway. About there. You can actually lock the screw into place with the nut we got up here. So what you could do, say you were building like a little shelving unit, 
Um, we can mark. Right, let's say we can roughly mark where we want maybe a shelf to be. So, and that's not going to be right angles or dead straight. But now we've got our depth gauge stopped. We can just put our teeth on the line. And then you can just, you're, then you're just like cutting out a, a channel or a rabbit in there. Um, but what you do need to do, forgot again, what you, when you are doing this, you need to have a piece of wood behind there because obviously the middle of the blade can't go all the way back. So you're not cutting the end of your piece of wood. So we want to get this in the right place. So we'll bring this down stick that back in our hole like that so now we just cut to the end and the middle of our blade is pretty much around there now so now we can just tap it over keep doing it Before the way you get to all the way to the other side of your pencil mark, you can just check it. If you've missed a bit, you can just clean it out. Blunt chisel and nuts. So if you're doing it this way, you could check your whip and think, right, I just need to take out a tiny bit more. So if you put your blade down, slide your piece of wood over to it, that will take off a tiny fraction or just give it a little tap. Check it again, give it another tiny tap. There you go, you could do a little rabbit and you know if you're making a shelf, you could put your shelves in there or obviously you wouldn't be using floorboard to do this, but that's just the idea. I have a table saw to do this and probably much easier to do it on. Because with a table saw, so I can just go zip, 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 zip. There you go. That, that gives you an idea of all the things you could do with it and all the stuff it can cut. So let's have a roundup. All right, so there we go. I think, I think I've just about covered everything now. Um, what's in our bag? Nothing. There is nothing in our bag. The bag actually hasn't managed to collect anything so you definitely need a hoover or a shop back connected to here right? I don't know why that's not automatically blowing it out the back like I say though this is the wrong bag for it it's probably it might not be made for it you might need some you know it might not be letting enough air through it might just be blowing up with the air and not allowing the material go in there. Final thoughts on the Evolution uh, multi-material miter saw. For the money, I think, you know, it's it's an entry level saw. And I think, um, I'll double check, I'm sure they're about 100 pounds on on uh, screw fix. Um, now I don't mind paying 100 pound for something like this if, if you're gonna use it quite regularly. I mean, I need to build, I'm gonna attempt to build a garage or a workshop. I've got a bigger uh, like uh, miter saw over there, but really, if you're going, you're going to be cutting. I'm going to be making a garage out with like a, a two by four frame, and this cuts two by fours um, fine. I mean, what was the? I mean, you have got written on the sides what it will cut. So this will actually cut 56 mil uh, deep by 210 long. I mean, that's two by eight, isn't it? Yeah, so that's pretty much a two by eight you could cut on here. You're not going to cut anything that's three inches thick. Um, but for the home DIY, what are you going to cut that's three inches thick? Most most of the most of the materials we're going to use are only two inches thick. So yeah, for the for the, for the money, I think this is like I think this is a little brilliant. It's not it's not that heavy. 
it's easy to move around. So I think this is I think this is a, I think this is a brilliant little little mitre saw. So if, I think for the money I would definitely go out and buy one of these. I mean I've upgraded to the 20 tooth now and I mean that has given me an absolutely lovely cut on this soft pine with no tear out whatsoever. Um, even the 2x4 it's gone through with the nails. There is literally no tear out. You've got tiny little bits in the corners and obviously when it's at the back you're going to get tear out at the back unless you're using a zero clearance. Anyway, that's enough of me babbling on. It's a great saw for, I would double check the price, but for £100, I mean, I bought a Titan table saw for £100 and it has been brilliant. So, but for this, I mean, I would highly recommend it. I'm not getting, I'm not getting paid to say I highly recommend it. If it was rubbish, I would tell you it's rubbish. You know, like the, uh, like the extraction. I mean, this hasn't collected anything and I don't know why. Why can't you put a bag on there and it's, it should automatically be blown into the bag. So I don't know whether that's something to look at, but apart from that, it's been brilliant. I would definitely go out and buy one of these. I'm not saying you have to, but I like it. And it's better than carrying that massive lump around. But that's it for the end of this video. I hope you liked it. If you do, hit that like button. If you didn't like it, hit the dislike button. Positive comments only. Let's help each other. And uh, before, before you cut up anything you think is mild steel and it's not, take a look at my other video of testing out whether it's hardened steel or mild steel. It will save you blunting your blade and wasting 20 quid on a new one or 25 pounds. That's it. Thanks for watching. Hope you learned something. Hope you enjoyed it. And I hope to see you in the next one. There's a lot of hope there. A lot of hope. Oh, and I'll quickly show you the, uh, I'll leave, I'll show you the mess this has made round about. You know I'm lost.